Well, howdy again, everyone, and welcome to the end of 2021. I don't know about you, but with everything going on in the world, this has been a year to forget for me. Although I've had fun with testing a few very interesting lenses this year. Now, this YouTube channel is not just about photography. It never has been. I like to put all kinds of things on here. And from time to time, I like to put together a little Christmas or Easter message for anyone who might want to hear it, seeing as I'm a minister and everything. If that's you, then stay tuned. But if you don't want to hear things about God and faith and Jesus and Christmas and just tick to the photography, that's totally cool. Just turn off now. I won't be offended. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along. Now, something I've been thinking about so much recently is just how powerful it is to put a face to a name. And I've noticed this on my own YouTube channel recently. I've put together a couple of uh, lens reviews recently this year where I've actually appeared on camera for a change. And I was blown away that people in the comments section seem to really like it. Like I said, the second time I appeared, I always thought my appeal lay solely on having an accent so British it could colonize your computer. Well, up until that point, I guess I'd been a bit faceless to a lot of my subscribers. It makes such a difference on the internet to actually see the person who's speaking to you, doesn't it? After only he ever hearing their voice, they suddenly become much more human. And I've always found that. As a kid, I came from a household where the radio was permanently turned on to BBC Radio 2, which is sort of an easy listening and chat station here in the UK. My mum particularly loves it. I remember growing up with the rich, deep voices of the various Radio 2 DJs ringing in my ears, and then wondering what on earth their faces might look like, only to be shocked years later when finally seeing them on TV. They always looked so much older or younger or stranger or beardier than I could have ever imagined in my little seven-year-old brain. Although I should have guessed about the huge beards when one of them nicknamed themselves the Hairy Cornflake. British DJs were a bit weird. But even though those monstrous beards from the 1980s were a little bit terrifying for me to witness as a child, still, looking, uh, well, discovering what those DJs actually looked like made them so much more human to me and made me feel more connection with them. And I'll never forget the most exciting time I finally got to put a face to someone who my wife and I had named and loved for nine months previously, when our little baby girl was finally born. I was so overwhelmed with excitement, thinking, wow, this is what that little girl, who's been kicking the living daylights out of my wife, looks like. Oh, she looks a bit more like my wife than me. That's a relief. Well, it's so much easier to love and respect someone who you've heard about when you finally have a chance to see them. You can finally humanize them and understand them just a little bit more, even the people you might not normally get along with so well. Conversely, it's so much easier to dismiss and dehumanize people who you've never seen before. Don't believe me? Just look at the comment section on just about any YouTube video on the entire internet, even on the most innocent videos about sneezing cats, new iPhones, or even reviews about camera lenses, someone will find some way of sparking up a furious argument about politics or religion or Nikon shooters or Sony cameras or whatever it is, with comments dripping with hatred and fury. I remember on one lens review I published in the background of some test footage, among everything else on my bookshelf that particular day, was a book I'd been reading by Jordan Peterson, and one or two people in the comments section went absolutely wild with hatred and fury that I might possibly be reading a book which they personally didn't agree with, calling me a fascist hate monger and, and all the rest of it. And then other people reacted to their comments by telling them how crazy they were and it all descended into chaos while well, I just checked back once, on a while, uh, once in a while for a bit of a laugh. On comment sections on YouTube, and on Facebook and Reddit and all over the internet, we tend to dehumanize whoever we're arguing with. That's such a temptation. We're tempted to say brutal stuff to them over the internet that we'd never dream of coming out with if we really knew the person we were talking to, or if we were talking to them face to face. 
it makes a big difference to see finally the face of someone who's been a bit of a mystery to us. It makes a world of difference to how respectful and how loving and to just how connected you can be with them. And that's what Christians celebrate happening at Christmas time with the arrival of Jesus Christ into our confused and hurting world. He is the face of Christmas and the face of God, who so many people have never met before, but who's always ready to meet us. For example, the Jews, for thousands of years of their history, had struggled with worshipping a God they couldn't see. They received the moral law through Moses, and they received guidance, hope, and correction from the prophets. They had witnessed occasional miracles from God's hand whenever he had to step in to save them from whatever mess they had gotten themselves into in the time before Jesus. But still, the crux of being a good Jew didn't really lie in having a personal relationship with God. It simply lay in keeping his commandments. They had never seen him or known what God would be like if he was a person. He remained a powerful force in the life of Israel, clear in his commandments, but mysterious in his personality. Was God pleased with them, or constantly mad, like Homer Simpson thinks? They could never be sure. And so, the religious teachers of the time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, rose up, offering even more rules and commandments of their own, promising that God would finally be pleased with Israel if only the people would put themselves under their additional burdens of keeping even more rules, in this case, rules that God never even gave out himself. Little could Mary, Joseph, the innkeeper, the shepherds, the wise men, or anyone else we know from the Nativity story who was there for the arrival of Jesus Christ, really realize that they had become a part of God's amazing plan for his mystery and anonymity to be wiped away. God was about to come into the world and show his face through the face of his Son, so that through Jesus Christ, our relationship with God could change from merely following a set of rules to try and make him happy to enjoying a relationship, a friendship with him that we could understand and relate to. Jesus, on multiple occasions, would take his disciples and others through the Old Testament scriptures, pointing out where he could be found, where he could finally be seen as the fulfillment of all God's mysterious promises that had been made to them. The God who the Jews had been looking for and struggling with was finally here, in the flesh, as promised, with a human face to see. And for that reason, I'm so deeply thankful for Jesus' arrival into our world at Christmas time. Well, we celebrate it at Christmas time anyway. But it wasn't only the Jews who wondered what on earth God was really like. The ancient Greek thinkers and philosophers had long since worked out that there had to be some controlling intelligence, some higher power, who perhaps created and governed and ordered the universe out of chaos. And yet, they had no idea who or what it might be. So they loosely named it the Logos, the Word. And in the first sentence of the Gospel of John, in the original Greek, which, by the way, I use for testing the longitudinal chromatic aberration of camera lenses, John called Jesus the Logos, the Word, and equated him with God. En arche en ho Logos, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was the face of God, that the world outside of Jerusalem, of Judaism, was looking for as well. In fact, there's a famous story from the book of Acts where the Apostle Paul is in Athens and finds an altar with the inscription to an unknown God, and then proclaims to them all that the God they're looking for could indeed be found in and through Jesus Christ. Finally, they could see his face. Perhaps God, perhaps God feels like something or someone faceless to you. He does for many people. Here in the UK, the majority of people still believe that there is a God out there somewhere. But most would then struggle to say what he's really like. He's there and hopefully they think he's nice and chilled out. 
but to many, he's a bit faceless. And that was the case for me for the first 21 years of my own life. I was a pretty miserable, bratty, ungrateful teenager. Uh, I can be like that occasionally nowadays as well, but back then I was really bad. And I sometimes called myself an atheist and then I'd swing to being an agnostic and then I'd swing back to being an atheist. Then I'd half-heartedly tried to study different religions to see if God could be found somewhere or another in them, including Islam and Judaism. But I remember the first time my heart began to be changed about God. And I began to pay a bit more attention to the Christian gospel. At grammar school, the chaplains had a special event with Chinese food for about 20 of us one night. And we got to ask them any question about God that we liked. And I really enjoyed events like that. They were challenging and fun. My question for them uh, towards the end was genuine but simple. As they, well, if, as they had been saying that evening, I asked, Jesus had died on the cross for my sins in order to pay the price for everything I'd ever done wrong before God so that I could choose to accept his forgiveness and have the relationship with God that I had been born to have? Well, why would he do that? Why would Jesus die on a cross for me? What had I done to deserve it? I barely had any friends at school at this point, and I had always felt like I needed to fight hard to receive and to deserve any bit of love and attention I could get from anyone. Well, my chaplain's answer was simple. He died for you because he loves you. He just loves you. And wow, that knocked me for six. In among all the studying of various religions and banging my head against the wall trying to read the Bible, that is when, finally, the relevance of the Christian faith and also a little bit of the face of God was finally revealed to me, making me want to know more. God really does have a face. In Jesus, he doesn't have to be a mystery anymore. And the other bit of good news is that that face is smiling at us not because any of us are fantastic or even good people who somehow deserve God's favour. Every one of us owes everything we have down to our very existence to God, whether we realise it or not, no matter how good or bad our lives might be. He doesn't owe any of us the first thing. None of us deserve his grace and mercy, but he smiles upon us all the same because we are all still made in his image. And he still loves us anyway, as a father loves his little daughter, even though she's never really done anything to earn it. And that look of love on Jesus' face carries an invitation to come to him this Christmas time or whenever in humility for his forgiveness, for his promises, for his hope, for his healing, for his guidance, and for him to change us into the better people that we all really want to be deep inside. Don't listen to the people who try and tell you that the face of God is just what you see when you look in a mirror, who try to focus all the attention back on yourself and give you pithy words of affirmation instead of leading you to Jesus, who wants to both love you and to change you. Even in many mainstream churches, pastors and bishops and even archbishops give entire messages at Christmas time and within them they're too ashamed to even mention the name of Jesus in case it offends someone. Our own Archbishop in the church in Wales did that himself this Christmas time. One false teacher from South Africa has even written a new version of the Bible which he calls the Mirror Bible, which twists and mistranslates the original words of the New Testament to try and claim that all of us are perfect and fine as we all are already, without needing any of God's help to change. People like this are just trying to tell others what they want to hear. They're afraid of teaching about God's true face and want to put their own face onto him instead, like looking into a mirror, which we're all tempted to do sometimes, even myself. The good news at Christmas is that God is so full of love towards us that he doesn't just affirm us as we are and love us as we are, 
He wants also to melt our hearts and change our minds and change our lives in order that we might choose to turn away from the things we do wrong in our lives and, and follow him instead. And he wants to give us, through Jesus, the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit in order to help us in our struggles. He wants to change us from the inside out. And isn't that what you want today? Not only to see the face of God, but to let him into your life, even into the, the darkest places of your heart and, and let him change you. And for that reason also, I'm so deeply thankful for Jesus' arrival into our world at Christmas time. I don't know about you, but if the only God I knew was the face I saw when I looked in the mirror, then I'd be pretty disappointed and feel pretty hopeless. But through the arrival of Jesus Christ, now, finally, anyone in the world can see the face of God. So don't just party this Christmas time, although you should do that too. Seek God genuinely with all your heart and you may just find him. God once spoke to the people of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah saying, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart because God's face is smiling upon you, ready to welcome you. He wants you to find him, but he will always let that be your choice. So may his face shine upon you this Christmas time.